Hello everyone, uh, Cooper here. So uh, I am an avid Craigslist, I don't know if the right word's entrepreneur or whatever, just I check it out all the time, uh, at least a couple times a week, you know? And you'll never know what will show up. And uh, I've been scrounging the computer records for a while, and uh, I live here in Pensacola, Florida, and unfortunately, we never tend to get old computers in here. It's till I found this guy right here. Um, this is the Apple Macintosh SE. Uh, I think it's from 1986. Uh, anyway, I was going through, I saw this beauty come up, and I was like, how the hell had I not seen that? Because apparently it had been up for 10 days. You know, it was over the Christmas season. Who knows, I was doing my thing, whatever. Um, anyway, so I, I went ahead, uh, the guy said it was all working, there were some issues with the floppy drives, other than that, it was all good. Oh, and it even came in with a printer, the image writer too. Uh, so I decided to go for it. Lately, over the past, like, I don't know, three or four months, I think I've been doing some electronic music stuff under the pseudonym uh, Relic. And that's been going okay, I've only got like four songs up now, I think, on SoundCloud or whatever. And you know, I have a background of, you know, playing in bands, stuff like Obviously you can tell there's a bunch of crazy stuff up here, right? But I haven't really done the solo electronic thing. So uh, I've been wanting to work towards that. Um, and I've got my first gig. Um, you may know them, the Magpie Pirates. Uh, Simon the Magpie is their leader, their captain. And the opportunity came up to play in Magpie Fest 3. And I was like, sure. <laughs> I may not be fully prepared, but I'm gonna give it a shot. And, uh, and so I was thinking of how to do that and uh, happened to get my hands on this beauty around the same time and I was like, well, you know what, um, I, I watched that video um, by Look Mom, no, no computer, yes, um, in this case there was a computer, uh, where they took one of these guys, I think it was the earlier Mac, the 1984 version, and, uh, and he ran Cubase on it and uh, used it as a MIDI interface, or well, you know, to to talk to all of his synthesizers. Of course, he has a, a wall of modular stuff, so I don't quite have that, but we do have some fun synthesizers here. So I was like, well, that'd be a cool way to do it. So why not? Let's give it a shot. So I ordered a slew of parts. So the SE in Macintosh stands for Serial Expansion? Honestly, I, I forget. It's something, ex System Expansion, I believe. Um, I, at first I thought it was second edition because I felt like that made sense since it is the second Macintosh, but no. So this particular model is the dual floppy, which apparently people did that a lot, where they bought the, um, the model with the dual floppy, which was the cheapest, and then they bought a third party hard drive, which is what we see here. So really you're getting kind of the best of both worlds, you got tons of floppy access. Uh, and your full hard drive, which I think was cheaper around the time rather than buying the Apple hard drive that was embedded in the machine. And that connects with uh, via the SCSI cable in the back. Um, and of course it requires its own power supply. Uh, and that's kind of one of the things I really don't like about this rather than it being another part to put together is the fact that it has a pretty loud fan. Uh, I've already replaced the fan in this guy. Uh, this guy is very loud, so it doesn't matter how quiet of a fan I put in here, we're gonna have this guy to deal with. Plus, I had the issue where I couldn't get software on here. Uh, luckily, I did get quite a bundle of software, but the guy initially uh, that I bought this from used this as more of a word processor, um, used MacDraw a lot to like make schematics and things. So this, this disc collection, comes with a number of the more typical software, but unfortunately he does not have Cubase or a Motu Performer, which is also another big one around the same time. So that's my big issue. I was like, how am I gonna get the software onto this computer? And so far my solution is uh, going to be replace this hard drive. Uh, I've ordered up a SCSI to SD, which is an expensive piece of kit, but you know, it does its job, hopefully. Um, in fact, I got the really nice one, because my goal, um, on the back here, let's bring it out, bring out the beast. I hope you like my fancy uh, rolling cart. It really reminds me of uh, school back in the day. So this has an expansion card in it. It's actually the PC drive card, because that's another big problem, is these, was it, three and a half inch floppies um, up front? Um, they only work with two formats. Uh, they max out at 800 kilobytes, which you'll notice is a little bit different than the standard PC, well, IBM compatible at that time. Which, so this actually cuts out at 800 because it has the famous Wozniak 
floppy device I see I forget it's something that Steve Wozniak invented what it does is it uses the variable rate as it's going through the floppy disk instead of the standard you know PC way of doing it of having just a strict rate and that way you can kind of on the outer rings of the floppy disk you can put in more sectors uh, and that was a whole idea how they were able to get a couple couple more kilobytes out of it which doesn't seem like a big deal now but back then that was pretty important that makes it incompatible with pretty much every other computer I have that supports floppy so that's why they have this guy here, the PC drive, which this is actually, uh, I found out to be a fairly rare item right here, boom. Um, so this actually takes five and a quarter uh, inch floppy disks, which were pretty popular back then when this was introduced. Um, they did replace it later on with a three and a half inch floppy drive. It has a, an expansion card that's actually hooked on, kind of like the accelerator cards and stuff, um, to the motherboard. And then um, has just a simple cable that comes up here on this expansion slot and uh, adds this crazy cable. So the whole idea with this is uh, this has the more standard floppy interface where you can write a five and a quarter inch floppy disk on, I think at the time they were really using it for IBM and Commodore 64 formats. And then the Apple uh, using the system utilities disk has a special file transfer uh, utility to get files off this and bring it into that the Macintosh format. This would be great, and I could probably get Cubase through this or whatever I want to use, uh, but I don't have any other five and a quarter inch floppy drives, so it's not all that useful to me. Um, now this is a pretty rare piece of kit, so if any of y'all are looking for this specific thing with the extension card and everything, um, let me know. I don't have any plans of selling it at the moment, but I could in the future if I really wanted to. Because I wanted to keep this expansion card in there. Not that I'm gonna use it, but just because I think it's cool. So my idea is to take that SCSI to SD little board um, and mount it internally. And then I have a little uh, USB extender, which I ordered from Adafruit. And then I'm gonna print out a new adapter there. So I'm gonna have room for this, hopefully. It's a really tight fit. Room for this guy, and then room for the USB on the side. And uh, with the version 5.6, I think, of the SCSI to SD adapter, you can actually transfer files to the SD card through USB. And that way, if that's all in there, pretty much I never have to open up the machine again because I can just plug this guy into USB, into my laptop or whatever, and get whatever files I need on there or transfer them out. Uh, I think that should do the job, do the trick, get me all set up. But there's one more piece of the puzzle to put in there. Now, before I forget, uh, let me just turn this guy on for y'all so you can see how freaking cool it is. Here we go. Oh, beautiful. And you know, with the, uh, the SCSI to SD card thing, it should actually run even faster. You'll see it takes a little while for that hard drive to really boot up and start putting out some data. There we go, we got our mouse. We're gonna have our welcome to app Macintosh little dialogue there in a moment. Okay, it's thinking. We got a happy computer. Hang out. Beloved welcome to Macintosh. Anyway, back to MIDI. So uh, Apple actually shipped this little box which plugged into the printer port and gave you a MIDI in and out, which is great, you know. Uh, I had a hard time finding those, at least uh, from a reputable source, for a decent price. Instead, there's a number of little rack mount units which connect straight up to this old computer and should work like a charm. Um, so I got one of those here. Just came in the mail. So this little puppy is Opcode Studio 3. Now, uh, from what I've seen, there's also a Studio 4 and a Studio 5, which are both great. It's just more MIDI inputs and outputs and stuff. What? The Studio 5 is actually a two rack unit, and it's crazy. In my case, I just want the one unit. See here, we have six outputs, which is plenty for me, and two inputs. Uh, we also have a printer port and modem port. I don't know the difference. I'm gonna hook it up through the printer. I hope that works. Um, some tape stuff. I don't think there's a tape input on this guy, so I'm not gonna bother. And then foot switches, which I gotta assume, maybe there's like an internal, like a third MIDI, uh, virtual MIDI thing internally where you can like send pulses through this or codes. I don't, I don't know. 
I'm not gonna bother with those. I really just need the MIDI out and that's all. So it's a pretty cool unit. Some options up here, which I don't fully understand yet, but I'm gonna mount this just down there and hopefully this should get me going. Now, I won't be able to test this today because like I said, I don't have any software yet that can do MIDI. Uh, and I don't know if any of these discs, like any of these utility discs and stuff, will have anything themselves to do MIDI. So we're not gonna get to that. I'm still waiting for that SCSI card to come in. And when it does, I'm gonna go crazy. But for now, we can at least put it together and just bask in its glory, right? Now, uh, the reason I have both of these floppy drives populated is that uh, the eject mechanism actually broken on both these drives. There's a little gear, which uh, I've tried 3D printing, but it's just too Ooh. tiny. And those little gear, they, oh, it was, it was a mess. Uh, so I was not able to 3D print it. There is a guy, I forget his name, but he designed the gear model himself and he put it up on Shapeways. It's not too expensive, but I don't really need the floppy drives at the moment. Um, and I don't mind manually doing them, so I'm uh, not gonna bother with it for the moment. That will be something I'll need to fix in the future. Turn this puppy around. Don't you love having things on a little cart? It's beautiful. So this is uh, the printer cable here, which uh, really is just a serial cable. I don't know exactly how the pinout works, but I'm assuming it has a transmit and a receive pin. Who knows what else? Hey, we're in like Flynn. Okay, I'll just stuff this cable to the side. Oh, that's the beautiful thing about rack mount stuff sometimes, is there's a little space on the side that you can stuff cables. Okay, so we're connected. Now, uh, like I said, since we don't have Cubase or Motu or whatever, I'm not expecting to get a whole lot done here today. But if I can get that little LED flash up, then I will be a happy boy. Oh, oh, we got Simpty. Now that's um, that's like a time code that's used for like, uh, if you're like syncing music up to a movie or video of any sort, that at least shows that this thing's working. So we have a, a MIDI and a through switch. So I guess if you have an actual printer hooked up, you can you know pass that data through. We're not getting any MIDI in because we have no MIDI in. I don't know what these do exactly. I got to look up the manual. The jam button, which is very important to make sure that you're jamming. Ooh. I feel it already. So yeah, I, I know, very anticlimactic. We can't play music or anything like that right now, but at least we know it turns on. I guess that's a good thing. So that's the setup, you know? And I'll, and I'll have all my mini cables run to my keyboards um, and my drum machine. I know he may not look at like much, but this is my baby right here, my MC505. Uh, a weird drum machine groove box thing, but I've learned to tame this beast. So normally what I'd be doing, if I'd be doing a live show with all this MIDI hooked up and everything, I'd probably be running this as my main sequencer, but it's a pain in the ass. So instead, I was hoping to use this guy, which is probably gonna be a pain in the ass, but it'll be better. I'll have more control over things. I'll be able to see what's going on. And so this guy will just be doing the drum machine stuff. I might have it doing a bass line too, maybe. Maybe some pads or strings. Oh yeah, like this has like sampled stuff. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's the first of its kind on uh, wherever this goes. I hope y'all tune in. The big show, Magpie Fest 3. It's gonna be on February 6th. I think I'm the 1.30 p.m. time slot for Central Time. I'm excited to get this baby doing some work for me, some music work. But today is not that day. Very sad. Have a great time. Bye-bye.